That's not true. You're a wealth of information. <laughs> Has anyone ever said that to you? Not in so many words. Hey. Hi. We're barely doing a recipe today because I'm not even making my own sauce. If you follow me or if you're on my Facebook page, you'll have seen a picture of my favorite cut of meat, which is this um, beef short ribs. And I usually find this at the Korean markets. Um, they're thickly cut, the bones are sliced um, crosswise as opposed to a full bone. Um, is that what I want to say? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so these, um, I just love the texture of them and I love eating them with um, cooked with the Korean barbecue sauce. And I cheat, especially when we're like really busy. So I get a package of this and I get a bottle of sauce from the Korean market and it's just Korean galbi barbecue sauce. And normally if I didn't have a pressure cooker, I would just marinate this for half an hour and then stick them under the broiler for a few minutes on each side and then you're done. Or it's great on the barbecue in the summer, but it is raining pouring out there and um, actually we don't even have our barbecue anymore, eh? Yeah, that's right. Got to get another one this year. So I'm just putting all of this into the pot. And for those who are new to um, pressure cooking, this is so easy. It will, you know, whatever fear that you may have um, in trying the pressure cooker, this is a, a really easy recipe because all I'm doing is throwing this meat in here. I have about three pounds. And you can use as much or as little as you want or need. And it's still slightly frozen. I guess that's how they're able to cut them so straight. And the great thing about the pressure cooker is that you can put them in slightly frozen and it'll be fine. And these barbecue sauce um, jars are great because it tells you exactly how much to pour in, depending on how much meat you have. So if you have 5.3 pounds of meat, you would pour that much sauce in. But I guess it only works for the first batch. And then after that, <laughs> you'll have to figure it out. On nice, but the initial brilliance <laughs> is uh, well appreciated. So I am a little bit, um, you know what, I, I I, I don't, I normally read labels and so this isn't one of those sauces that I would um, really want to purchase if I had read everything, but there's nothing really too odd in there, it's just a lot of preservatives um, in it. So maybe next time I will make my own Galbi marinating sauce, but for this is a simple recipe to just do on the fly. I'm using their method of measuring. So I've gone way past three pounds. Oh, it's going to be extra tasty then, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to try to stir this around a little bit so I can get some of the sauce on all the pieces of meat. And you know, my chopstick skills aren't so great, so. No, they're not. <laughs> Just to uh, reiterate what was said before in previous episodes. And then um, the dude's really not happy with me because I was at the Korean market and I totally forgot to buy all the sides that I normally buy to have with this. What do they call it, the banchan or the, the side yeah, dishes? Yeah, the banchan, the, the side dishes. And so normally I would get little fishies and seaweed, kimchi. Yeah, I'm not thrilled. <laughs> Anyways, I'm like totally messed up my little... Um, when I was placing all the meat. Anyways, because okay. I don't want them all touching, like all squished together, because it might take longer to cook. I want them to kind of be sitting in there. Oh, fine. I'll forget it. Whatever. It's not a big deal. No. Okay. So, I'm going to put the lid on. 
going to put the lid on, making sure the ceiling knob is on ceiling, and check it. Manual, five minutes. And that's it. And then we're going to stick it under the broiler to brown, thicken up the sauce a little bit, serve it on rice with some veggies on the side. Perfect. Except no banchan. Yeah. No Fit. kimchi. So sad. That's so sad. Shame. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> See you in a bit. All right. So it took about 22 minutes from start to finish in the cooker. And I'm going to release the steam. All right, check it. Looks so yummy, smells so good. All right, so I have my broiler on and I'm just going to put these onto a cookie sheet that is lined with parchment paper. So fall off the bone already. Right. So cool. <laughs> Five minutes. Why isn't that cool? Well, I, I'm curious as to like how we usually do it, or how you usually do it, is to marinate the meat for uh, a couple of hours in the fridge, yeah, and then turn on the grill. Well, Just nothing you're can gonna be get, a grill. You're gonna get that smokiness from the grill, right? That you're not getting here. Yeah. And you know what? You don't have to use this Korean barbecue sauce. You can use whatever sauce you want. So long as um, it's like a marinade and not like too thick like a barbecue sauce. If, you, if you're using like a barbecue sauce, like a tomato-based barbecue sauce, you'll have to add some water because otherwise it will get, um, it can scorch at the bottom. Oh, because of not, all the sugars? Yeah, well then tomato, um, you can't, it won't pressurize because there's not enough um, liquid to produce steam to create the pressure. Mm. Okay, my oven door is still broken. They say that I can fix it, so yeah, hopefully right. they will. <laughs> Whoa, scared, watch no, out for I that scared, burner. No, I scared myself. You scared me. <laughs> I'm going to turn saute on. And I have the amount of liquid in here is about, um, it goes up to the two marker on the side of the pot. So for that amount of sauce, I'm going to add one tablespoon of cornstarch, mixed with a tablespoon of water, of course. And about a tablespoon of water. wait for your liquid to simmer. It has to be cold water and not hot water, otherwise your cornstarch won't melt or dissolve. You can hear the sizzling of the meat. I have to pull it out in a second. Okay, so it's starting to sizzle. Sizzle. It's starting to simmer. I'm just gonna pour the cornstarch in and we're just gonna let that thicken up. All right, I'm already starting to brown quite nicely, so I'm going to flip them over. It was only, I don't know, a minute or two, like not very long. I'm going to flip them over and do the other side. Oh, you can see that difference between the flipped and the... Uh, unflipped? Unflipped. I didn't know how to say it, but thanks <laughs> again. <laughs> That's why I married you. All right. All right. See how that's completely thickened up now? Can you see through all the steam? Trying to zoom in. Let's see. Okay, I see it. Yes. All right. So that's ready. So you hit cancel. Okay, going back into the boiler. Just another minute or two. Good enough. Yep. Ta-da! All done. I already know what it tastes like. It tastes like awesome. What I would normally do at this point is. Just cut them at the bone and I'm just going to toss it all back into the sauce and then you can have it that way but we'll just let him taste test first. Whoa. Did you see that? I caught on camera. <laughs> your awesome chopstick skills. <laughs> all right. Mm. 
Hey. All right, let's get into this. The Galbi. It's one of my uh, favorite cuts of meat, but um, and the but it's not the same as the grill. You just can't beat the smokiness and the caramelization on the grill. But for a quick meal, that quick hit of beef, quick hit of galbi, I think it's pretty good. Of course, I need a knife. You know what's missing? That someone failed at <laughs> the banchan. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Hmm. <sighs> Oh, that gravy would be so delicious on rice. It will be because you're making rice. So simple, easy, one of my favorite cuts of meat. Can't go wrong. Hope you'll give it a try. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Find me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching.